Thanks very much, Dr. Menzies. Uh, good afternoon, folks. Uh, folks, first I'll start by introducing myself, as Dr. Menzies has said. Uh, my name is Richard Gleeson. Uh, I'm based in the NEOC Centre in um, Tala, um, and we look after the two, the, the, there's two national control centres now. It's called NEOC, which is the National Emergency Operations Centre, and we have two centres. So we've one in Tala and we've one in Ballyshannon. So before, probably some of you would have dealt locally with your centres, say Tullamore, Wexford, and Cork and other areas, they've all amalgamated now, and this is obviously for the better, and we're going to explain the reason why. So we're going to discuss today is the, obviously the NEOC, uh, we're going to talk about our new CAD system that was implemented into the, into the NEOC centre, and we're going to talk about the integration and the deployment of CFRs. So as I've mentioned already, there, so we've two centres, so we've one in Tala and we've one in Ballyshannon. So Tala, or Tala would be our main control centre in the sense that we would look after the majority of the, of the country from Tala and then Ballyshannon would be our resilience, but it is a very active control room and it is a not fully operational control room. They would look after the North East. Uh, the NEOC, between both centres, we have uh, 155 staff. Um, our organisational chart is made up, uh, staff are broke down from call takers, uh, we have emergency medical dispatchers, uh, control supervisors, and then we have control managers, and then we have a chief ambulance officer there for the NEOC. A uh, small picture then of the centre itself. Uh, the centre is laid out in a very open plan, uh, very open plan office. Uh, one side you will see that we have our call, call takers on one side, and then the uh, picture you're looking at then is our, from our dispatch section. Although the room, as I said, it is one side and the other side, it's very open plan and we do communicate very much together and on the information that is being received from the call taker and then being relayed direct to the dispatcher. So we're just going to briefly talk then about the emergency call taker. On average, that was, as was mentioned there by um, uh, Martin Dunn earlier on, it's approximately between eight and 900 calls. That's an eight or 900 emergency calls between the 24 hour period within between the both centers. Each call taker will have completed a FEC registered course, which is the emergency call taker course, which is run within the uh, National Ambulance Training School. So each call taker that comes in has to, run, has to take part in this course before they can become a qualified emergency call taker. There also is a certification there for the AMPDS. And for those responding, you'll probably see that coming up in your text message, the AMPDS. This is what it is, it's the Advanced Medical Priority Dispatch. So this is a priority dispatch system that is used in the control centre. For any call that we're faced with, we have a CAD system, a computer-aided design system that will actually deal with any query that is brought in on the 909 system. And that's how we get our code. Now today, we're going to, the code we're going to talk about today is the 9 echo one which majority of um, community first responder groups would be responding to. Just to touch briefly then on the emergency medical dispatcher, uh, they also have completed a FEC registered course, an emergency medical dispatch course. Um, this is a dispatcher's responsibility to dispatch the nearest resource to the incident. So obviously when the address is received from the call taker, the call taker will, um, from the caller to the call taker, uh, they in turn will input it onto the CAD system and once they input it, it automatically populates on the dispatch screen and they can be sourcing, the, sourcing then the nearest available resource to the actual incident. As I mentioned today, and in fairness, I, I, to, just to echo previous speakers there, um, Owen and um, anyone else who spoke this morning, the chain of survival is vital, vital, starting down from community first responders all the way up to the National Ambulance Service to really everybody in the pre-hospital. And I suppose we within the control centre would have our own chain that we would work to as well. So first of all, on our chain there, we would have ECAS. For those who don't know who ECAS is, ECAS is the emergency call answering service. So if anyone has ever rang 999, you'll get an operator and they will ask you which service do you require, let it be ambulance, fire or guardee. And that's the, that's the first point of contact, obviously for ambulance calls to be put straight through to ourselves. Then you will be put in touch then with our emergency call taker, who will then will relay the information there to our, our emergency medical dispatcher. And then from our dispatcher then it comes down to yourselves, they're the first responder. So as soon as the code is populated onto the system, the 9 echo 1, you get the text message straight away, as majority are responding to at the moment. Then we have our other agencies that would support us, so we'd have the likes of our Gardaí, who would be uh, responders with us, fire service, or if there are other agencies like Coast Guard or different other agents would be required at the actual incident. And then we're all down to arrival on scene, and the most important thing then for everyone is SISM. Um, I think Angie is running, um, has been running workshops all day. It is a very, very important part of the chain of survival as well. Just to talk briefly then about the CAD system we have. The CAD system we have, it's a UK-based system. Um, it's a C3 Nexus system. 
Uh, Wexford has been using it there a long time um, and it has been brought into the control centre in Tala, uh, September last year. Um, it will populate the, the, from landline numbers. Um, if, a, a mobile, if a call has been received from a mobile phone before, it will populate that address as well so it will prompt us that it's there, that, it, that, that is the address. Uh, it will tell us what mast it's coming from, that's linking in from ECAS, so exactly what area the actual call is coming from. Obviously a landline will get the exact address from it, if it's a mobile it will tell us what area. Uh, recognizes all air codes and then it's linked to that CAD system I mentioned earlier. So that's um, the call taker then is going to get, I'm actually going to just jump on there, we have, I think it's coming up, we just have a live call. Can I go too far? Okay, this is the call taker screen. As you can see there, the CAD number that you get there up in the top left hand corner, that's the number, that's the incident number that you, that you will get on your text message and then the last three digits that you respond to. So here in this case, it's 671410. And obviously the time and date is on the next one. This is for a call that was run there in 12 Main Street in Bray. Uh, you'll see there what the problem was, was allergic reaction. And you'll see that it came in as a nine echo one. You'll also see on it there, it was a 15 year old boy there who was not conscious and not breathing. And that's where we get our nine echo one code. Uh, this is a copy of the map that the call taker will have. Um, as you can see, that there's a purple tag there indicating that it's on 12 Main Street in Bray. They can go in more detail, but this is just an overview of the map and we can pick out different features as well. It's not going to work. Okay. We had a live call there that we were hoping to play for you there. Um, fortunately, due to technology, it worked there just in the practice there during lunch. So the call there itself then, it was where we had the call taker relaying the information to the actual call taker. And I just ran through exactly what the emergency call taker did. So the first thing to do is they get the address or get the telephone number and confirm the telephone number. Then they're going to confirm the address. And once the address is being confirmed, it's exactly the next question is, what's the problem? And that's exactly what you find in front of you. So if it is a case you have to make a 999 call, just tell us exactly what's in front of you. We don't need to go down to the technical things that I think they're having an allergic reaction, that they're having a hypo event or whatever. Just tell us what you see. It could be something as simple as, there's a man on the ground in front of me. Because with the system we have, we will ask the questions, is he conscious, is he breathing? And we will be able to pull the information from you. So this is a, just a, a screenshot there from the AMPDS um, the priority dispatch system that we use. So we do it a little bit differently in on what's been trained in the community in the sense that if we have somebody that we use, that we use ventilations first, it's probably very, very hard to see there, is it? it uh, we will have handouts there if, if anybody does want them there, we can um, get them. So for ventilations first, we would use it in, say if somebody had it, they're just listed there. So we have allergic reaction, if there's an asthma, COPD, choking, hanging, lightning strike, and so on that's listed there. Anything else, we would go straight for our compressions first. So anything else then, we, we would do uh, compressions first. The only difference in the compressions that we, we would use there to the, um, the AMPDS and, um, and what you would use as um, first responders is that when we're doing our ventilations first, we give her two breaths and then we give her 30 compressions and we keep that going. If it's a case that we start with compressions first, and this is probably something that you have seen as responders going into houses, you'll probably hear family members doing that they were told to do 600 compressions. That's what we advise now for somebody who's found in a collapsed state, who don't fall into the list there at the top, where we do 600 compressions, we'll give two breaths, and then it's 100 compressions and two breaths. Uh, this, is, this comes from Priority Dispatch, and they have amalgamated all the guidelines. Uh, Ray mentioned it earlier there, the ILCOR guidelines, but they're also pulling there the um, it's the European uh, Resuscitation Tech Council and also the American Heart Association and they're compiling their, the guidelines and this is what they feel is best in pre-hospital. So this is the one there for the 30 to two and this is the script that our call takers would read out to it. So it just says there is push the chest hard and fast, um, um, 30 times, sorry, and twice per second, two inches. So it's exactly from, that, from a first responder's perspective, that's exactly what um, we would be relaying to the actual call takers. And then this is the other side then. So if we raise a case or we go with our compressions first, so we would be telling the people then uh, to push the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep and let the chest come all the way back up and we're going to do this 600 times. 
Now we have a metronome as well built into the system as well, the AMPDS, and you'll, you heard us earlier on there, it's one, two, three, four, and it's at a pace, and we can advise the caller then if they're going too, too fast or too slower to speed up. Okay, we have the call there now, so. Ambulance emergency. Um, hi, I need an ambulance quickly, please. Quickly. Oh, okay, can you give ambulance. me the phone number you're calling from, please? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, off of five, one, two, three, five, six. Okay, can you repeat can that you for verification? Please, come here, I don't think he's breaking, I need an ambulance. Okay, I need to repeat that phone number for me, please. Oh, four. Oh four five um one two three five six. Come here. I, we okay, have what's the address? I want to do. What's the address of the emergency? It's twelve. Twelve Main Street. Twelve Main Street. Where? Yes. Oh, Bray, Bray. Okay. The address in full, please repeat. Twelve Main Street, Bray. And is that County Wicklow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me exactly what happened. Look, I'm here on my own with him. Can you? He, he took an allergic reaction and he's unconscious now. Okay. Like, and how old is he? I, I don't even know if he's breathing. He's how old is he? Fifty. Is he awake? No. Is he breathing? No. Okay. Is the ambulance on the way, like? Because the help is on the way. I'm organising help for you now. Stay on the line. Okay. okay. If there's a defibrillator available, send someone to get so in and tell me when you have it. Yeah, no, okay. no, I'm on my own. Okay. Listen carefully. Are you right by him now? Yeah, yeah, I'm right beside him. Now. Okay. Lay him flat on his back on the ground and remove any pillows. Okay. Okay, that's done. Okay. He's on his back. I'm going to tell you how to give mouth to mouth. Place your hand on his forehead, your other hand under his neck, then tilt the head back. Okay, I'm just putting in the speakerphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, place your hand on his forehead, your other hand under his neck, then tilt the head back. Okay, yes, yeah, I see Now that. pinch his nose closed and completely cover his mouth with your mouth, then blow two regular breaths into the lungs, about one second each. Okay. The chest should rise with each breath. Okay. Did you feel the air going in and out? Yes, yes. Okay, listen carefully and I'll tell you how to do chest compressions. Make sure you flatten his back on the ground. Yes, and place he the, back. Okay, place the heel of your hand on the breastbone in the center of the chest, right between the nipples. Okay. Put your other hand on top of that hand. So okay. as you can see, okay. as this call goes on, they're going to talk through CPR, and the call taker has received all this information straight away, so we got exactly the location, how old the patient was, that they weren't conscious, weren't breathing, and we got a 9 echo one code, and straight away that was sent out to the first responder group down in Bray, who were um, very, very close to it, and that's how fast the system works. Once the call has been received, the information has been put in on the CAD system, it gets straight out to first responders, and in turn then we'll have the emergency medical dispatcher on the other side, dispatching the nearest available resource and other agencies required to the incident. Uh, folks, I'm going to hand you over to Gavin now, who's just going to take you through the emergency me medical dispatcher side of things. How are we, folks? Um, so I'm just going to uh, basically speak about the uh, dispatcher side of the house. So simultaneously, while the emergency call taker is processing the call, um, once we verify, um, once we verify uh, the phone number uh, and the address, um, and tell me exactly what happened is answered, the call appears on the dispatch screen. So within three questions, the call is already ready for the dispatcher. So what our emergency dispatcher is looking at is his available resources, uh, and he's looking to manage, or he or she is looking to manage the call from the start to finish. So available resource types at the moment will be our traditional emergency ambulances, our rapid response vehicles, um, and our community force responders. We also have off-duty staff responders, um, other services such as Coast Guard, fire services, uh, and doctor responder schemes. So um, initially, or straight away, our dispatcher is looking, um, looking at the call, looking at the information that's appearing in front of him uh, or her, and looking to if you just look at the screen there, you can see there's a number of resources actually tagged to the call. So you can see incident number, the time of call is 14.59. Uh, all the details appear on the screen. Um, it's the exact same screen as the, the call taker uh, has uh, started and is populating and continues to get updated. So the call taker can put additional information that will appear in front of the dispatcher simultaneously as it's been inputted on the other side of the room or in Ballyshannon. Um, this is our resource screen, so what our, our dispatchers are doing is they're looking for a resource, so we're asking the system to recommend the resource, um, and I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but we're working on 12 Main Street in Bray, and if you just see there, you can see that there's a rapid response vehicle, there's an officer response vehicle, you can see there are ETAs, 
And as you go further down, you can see uh, a doctor responder. There's three emergency ambulances there. They're actually showing at hospital. And the next available emergency ambulance, uh, and you can see the clinical level. So all the information is in front of the dispatcher. So he has the uh, clinical level of the vehicles, um, the types of vehicles, uh, the types of um, resources. Also has his first responders. Within a minute of um, verification of code, a text is automatically generated from the system um, out uh, to our force responders within that area, depending on what they're set up for. Distance-wise, it varies between three to five to 10 kilometers, depending on what they're set up for. <coughs> that one, for example, is from that test call. You can see we have uh, an Iskeri uh, Bray 2, Bray CA4. Uh, we have a staff responder, um, Andy. Des Kelly, um, CFO coordinator, Dr. Menzies, and then an off-duty ambulance officer, all within five kilom or set kilometres for that area. So you can see they all received the text, and if you just look at the times there, the text went out within a minute of the call being processed. So in essence, you were being dispatched before the ambulances. I just have a bit of a, I don't know if it'll work, we have uh, just a standard uh, ambulance message that will go out. Voices there. It's myself and Richard actually mocked that up. Um, so, as you can, as you've heard, so we're informing our crews that are responding um, that there is other, uh, be it other agencies or other responders going as well, so they can up or down downgrade the response. So the CFO first on scene can contact us and say this is not a cardiac arrest. We can stand down additional resources going, or we can upgrade and add additional resources as required. Um, Richard. Uh, showed you earlier on the map the emergency call taker sees. It's the exact same map as our dispatcher sees. Again, just taking Bray out, you can see that's just a hit, so an initial hit, so it's enough information to guide a crew in. Um, so they'd be the basic ordnance, ordnance survey maps we're using at the moment. Um, and what we have then is additional maps that can drill down and go street level. I'm not sure if you can see that. But you can see, if you pass Euro Saver and Doobery Books, it's the, the next, the house just after Doobery Books. There's all the different shop names. Uh, I don't know if people are familiar with Bray, does, you can see all the names. So it's, it's Tiger. It's Tiger. Right. So we can drill down to street level and get that, that much information. Um, our dispatchers are then able to relay that to our, our responders as they're responding. On the revival of the first resources, as I said, they'll obviously contact control, be it uh, CFO, uh, doctor responder, rapid response, or emergency ambulance, they're going to come back and update this to up or down grade. The dispatcher will then obviously manage that call from start to finish, um, adding additional information, and then take an ash ice. So crew will request hospital to be pre-alerted, that it'll come back to the control, and then on to Vincent's or other hospital. Community first responders then, just to briefly touch on it, you're probably all familiar with it, but we'll just quickly run through it there. Um, the basic CFO there, they're the codes, uh, echo calls. Uh, you can see they're colour coded with AMPDS, so colour is very important, but is it like it flags in the control room, our delta calls will flag as red on the screen, our echoes are purple. And then you can see the enhanced CFOs, uh, and then the additional enhanced CFOs for uh, 28 CVA stroke. And I suppose it's something uh, it's come up and we've just, um, will be the text message. This is for the groups that are on the single phone uh, system, you'll see the text. 
You can see incident number for your reference, cardiac respiratory arrest, uh, the 9 echo 1, Main Street and Bray, and air code where applicable, 15 year old male. And we've done the test call there at, uh, on, and you can see the time as well. So all the information has been relayed, and that's gone into the CFRs, staff responders, uh, and anybody set up on the system. Um, I just the, I suppose an important piece for ourselves is to know you're going, we need to know you're responding. Um, so for the single phone responders again, um, it's the zero one space and then the last three digits of the, 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 the call. So as you can see there, there's the text message and this is what we, zero one plus four one zero, you're at scene and then you're clear and available when you're clear from scene. And then if you just see that, you can see the stats given. Sure, mobile, at scene, and then you're clear and available. Um, just one thing we were asked to raise there, in the event that you're receiving um, an updated text message, as the information is upgraded or as we're getting additional information, uh, you may get an additional text where the code would change. So it might turn into a 31 Delta 2 or, an, or a 10 Delta. 6 delta 1. So we just, if you do get into a code that you're not set up to respond for, we would request that you would send a stand down message and stand down off the call. It may be, uh, there'd be various reasons, but uh, primarily probably due to safety. So uh, we just recommend that you do that. Thank you.